Hey, how's it going? Today I'm gonna to talk about the times when people came back to life from another life. Have you had this occurrence in your life? Probably, maybe. With so many people claiming to be reincarnated of many other people, it was only a matter of time before someone claimed to be a reincarnated person. From an alien to an animal. Enter Borisk, the Russian man who claims to be reincarnated of a life of a Martian. Boriska says he used to live on Mars until he was killed during a nuclear war. Before the war, he was part of a Martian team that regularly visited Earth. Boriska added that Martians have partially unlocked the secret of immortality. Partially is an interesting term for immortality because that's sort of not immortal at all. They have the technology to stop themselves from aging once they reach 35 years old, he says. Boriska says our spacecraft cannot detect our life on Mars because the entire planet was leveled during the war and the rest of the Martians relocated underground. Obviously, absence of oxygen on Mars is not a problem, since Martians breathe carbon dioxide. Ma Wen Tar was born in 1962, and at around the age of bright three, she started referencing a life as a Japanese soldier. The soldier had been captured by Burmese villagers and burned alive while tied to a tree. The specific life in her account was not identified, but as Stevenson points, the circumstances were plausible. In 1945, Burmese villagers would capture any of the stragglers from the retreating Japanese army, and they sometimes burned soldiers alive. Ma Wintar showed traits that were interestingly with her life as a Burmese girl. She liked her hair cut short and liked to dress in boyish clothing, sometimes also from forbidding from her family. She refused the spicy foods that marked Burmese culture also showing a preference for sweet foods and pork. She also showed a streak of cruelty, including a habit of slapping the faces of her playmates. Stevenson said that the Japanese soldiers often slapped Burmese villagers and that the practice is not culturally organic to the area. Ma Wenzar resisted her family's Buddhism and even went so far as to consider herself a foreigner. She declared visiting members of the Japanese War Graves Commission who had come to her town as her own nationality. Oddest of all, Marwin Tar had been born with severe birth defects in both hands. Her middle and ring finger on the right hand were webbed and loosely attached to the rest of her hand, sort of like being melted. They were amputated when she was only a few days old. A ring on her left wrist had three separate depressions. There were also, according to her mother, a similar mark on her right wrist and had faded. The marks were eerily similar to that of a rope burn something a Japanese soldier who had been burned alive while tied to a tree might have acquired during their ordeal. When James Arthur Flowerdale was 12 years old, he began having strange dreams. Don't we all? These dreams were mostly blurry and vague when they first started, but over time they became clear pictures. As he continued to dream, he saw a stone city carved into a cliff and various temples inside the city. He also saw a rock shaped like a volcano situated on the fringes of a stone city. Arthur didn't know what to make of these dreams and also tried to ignore them. Arthur visited the beach with his family. As he was playing around, he grabbed some pebbles and bent down to pick them up. A vision slammed into his head. It was the city of his dreams. So intense was the vision that he could smell dry desert air. Lovely. Dropping the pebbles made the image dissipate into the wind. He revisited the beach after a short time later to see if the vision would happen again. And as soon as he picked up the pebbles, it sure did. He saw more details the second time, such as a stone passage and a military barrack. For the first time, Arthur started thinking that he may have been a soldier in the dream and had been killed there by a spear. Arthur never had any explanation for this experience. Many years later, when he was an old man, Arthur watched a documentary about the ancient city of Petra in Jordan. He instantly realized that this was his city of dreams, and he became convinced that he had lived there in his past life. He contacted the BBC, who arranged an interview between Arthur and an archaeologist. The archaeologist was flabbergasted when he discovered how much knowledge Arthur had of the ancient city, without even being there in the first place. Eventually, the Jordan government invited Arthur to visit Petra. Arthur found his way around the city without the help of a map, guide, or GPS system and pointed out sites that hadn't been excavated yet. He talked about a military barrack 
where he worked with a check-in system for guards and even provided facts about the area that experts were not aware of. Ann Stevenson was a psychiatry professor from the University of Virginia. He focused on reincarnation. Of course he did. In 1993, he published a paper in the Journal of Scientific Exploration detailing birthmarks and birth defects, seemingly linked to past life memories. According to his findings, the majority of birth defects are thought to be formed by unknown causes. In one case, a child in Turkey remembered the life of the man who was killed by a shotgun. Hospital records total of a man who had died after six days of injuries caused by a blast to the right side of the skull. The boy in question was born with a deformed ear. And also, he had some sort of underdevelopment of the right side of the face. In 1987, three-year-old Dominda Bendra started talking about the Asgrel Temple and monastery in Kandy, saying that he used to be an abbot there. Dominda was born in 1984 to a Buddhist parent and was the second youngest of three brothers. He talked about the temple nonstop and also talked his mother that he owned a red car, taught other monks, and died in a hospital bed where he was taken after experiencing sudden sharp pain in his chest. He also recalled having a pet elephant. The little boy soon started wearing his clothes in the way of a monk and visited a Buddhist temple twice a day. At this point, he also didn't want to go to school with girls and didn't want women, including his mother, to touch his hands. When the abbot of the Malwa Temple died in 1990, Domando randomly exclaimed that he had known him very well. It seemed that the Buddhist monk who died of a heart attack and owned a red car could have been Domenda in a past life. And also that monk had an elephant. Barbeau Carlin was born nine years after Anne Frank died. From a young age, she insisted that Barbeau wasn't her real name and that her family should call her Anne instead. She also told her parents that she knew they weren't her real mom and dad. At that point though, Barbeau's family wasn't up to date with the Anne Frank story and thought maybe she was losing her mind. They carted her off to a psychiatrist thinking that she was somehow lost in a fantasy world. By age 12, Barbeau wrote a book of poetry that would become one of the most popular books in her native Sweden language. She went on to write nine more volumes. However, she can shake the feeling that she wasn't who everyone thought she might have been. But she stopped talking about it after she realized who Anne Frank was and thought people likely thought she was insane. This was despite the trip to Amsterdam with her parents at age 10, during which they visited the house of Anne Frank. Barbara knew exactly how to get to her the house and that the steps outside had actually been changed. Her parents were stunned to hear all these facts. Once Barbara entered Anne's room, she felt an overwhelming fear but refused to leave. She knew that there was once plenty of pictures on the wall as well, placed there by Anne, and when she told her mother this, the older women finally understood what her daughter had been trying to say all these years. She was Anne Frank in a past life. Barboa met Anne's cousin, actually, Buddy Ellis, years later, and he told reporters he believed that she was actually the reincarnation of Anne Frank. Ryan, born in 2005, was just a boy when he claimed to be the reincarnation of Marty Martin, who had died about 50 years earlier. Ryan recognized Martin in a photograph. Normally, someone like Martin could not have been as rich as Ryan had claimed. Martin was just a movie extra. Well, this was until he hit big riches when he became a talented agent. Martin traveled around the world in large boats and bought a big house with a swimming pool and also a piano. Ryan mentioned all of these items of the past life of this gentleman. Ryan also added that he had two sisters, one of whom was a dancer, and that his mother had brown curly hair. All of these were true. Ryan was a little bit off with some of his descriptions of Martin though. For instance, he said that Martin's home address contained either rock or a mount. Martin's last address did not contain either of these words. However, it contained Roxbury, which arguably sounds like a rock. Helene Smith, 1861 to 1929, claimed to be a reincarnation from the famous French queen, Mary Antoinette. She also claimed to be the reincarnation of the daughter of an Arab and the wife of a Hindu prince. She worked as a spiritual medium. Smith frequently fell into a trance during which she claimed to communicate with aliens. She also said that she understood the language spoken on Mars. 
and she would also often speak and write what she purported to be alien language. She even made drawings of what the terrain of Mars looked like. Smith's drawings of Mars showed beings, boats, houses, plants, bridges, lakes scattered along the Martian terrain. Unfortunately, there was no McDonald's in this drawing. In the 1930s, an Indian girl named Shanti Devi claimed she used the reincarnation of another Indian woman named Lujdi Bai. Lujdi was born on January 18th of 1902. She got married at 10 and lost her first child after suffering a stillbirth. She birthed a second child on September 25th of 1925. She died of pregnancy complications, unfortunately, on October 4th. Shanti was born on December 11, 1926. She rarely talked as she grew older. When she did, it was about her husband and her children. She said her husband, named Kendrith, lived in Mathra and that they had a son. She described her husband, his shop, and also his house. She also described the way she dressed when she was with him and also the things that she used to do. Shanti's family started taking her stories more seriously after she described how she died. The revelation startled a physician, since Shanti was too young to have understood the surgical procedures she talked about. Her family later arranged a meeting between her and Kentrith's cousin. Shanti recognized her husband's cousin. She also recognized Kentrith when she finally met him. The news of the reincarnation spread through India. Gandhi even selected 15 people to investigate Shanti's claims. The team followed Shanti to Mathra, where she recognized several people described how it had changed since her death, and led them to her husband's house, even though she had never been there before. And finally, when John McNeil was fatally shot six times in 1992, he left behind a daughter named Doreen. Doreen gave birth to a son, William, in 1997. William was diagnosed with pulmonary valve artistry, a cognitive condition in which a faulty valve directs blood from the heart to the lungs. The right ventricle of his heart was also deformed. William's condition improved after numerous surgeries and also treatments. When John was shot, one of the bullets entered his back, hitting his left lung and the main pulmonary artery in his heart. John's injury and William's condition affected the heart and lungs in a very similar manner. One day while trying to avoid discipline, William told Doreen, when you were a little girl and I was your daddy, you were bad at all times and I never hit you. Similar, often familiar statements followed. William asked Doreen about a cat she had as a little girl and mentioned that she called it Boss. Strikingly, only John had once called the cat that. Its given name was Boston. William was also able to differentiate between Boss and another family cat named Manic. William was able to state the days he was born, a Tuesday, and the day that John died, Thursday, before he even knew his days of the week without Doreen's prompting. He said he'd been told on Tuesday by God that he was ready to come back. John had told his daughter that he would actually always take care of her. Whether he did in fact come back to take care of her, as William or the coincidences are an interesting link to her father. I'm curious if William actually might have been the family pet as well. That would have been an interesting twist as well. Anyway, what do you think of reincarnation? Do you find it fascinating? Do you think you're reincarnated? Thanks for watching. Have a great one. Bye.